I am alone in my bedroom right now, and you can edit all of this out because I don't think it's going to be pleasant for anybody to listen to, let alone myself, but we're doing it. I want to talk about subtitled movies and the presentation of them in modern day cinemas, particularly the release, theatrical release, stateside of the film RRR. One thing that we ran into when I went to go catch it in the movie theater, uh, they were doing a, and I will call out the movie theater on this one because they need to be doing better, and it's, <laughs> it's, it's a classic. It's not retro, but it's a mainstay of cinema in the Boston area. Um, it was put on by the Brattle Theater, and they put it on at the Somerville Theater. Now, this is not a knock against the Somerville Theater. I was there. It's a fine place to go see a movie. It's the worst place to see a movie if the film you're seeing is subtitled because their seating arrangements are flat. Almost like you're going to go see a comedy show. I bring that up specifically because that happened to me recently too. Oh, well, we had decent seats as long as no one tall sits in front of us. And the tallest person I've ever seen in my entire life proceeds to sit right in front of us. Incredible. The issue, though, is that there was a big screen at that comedy show. <laughs> side note, we were at the very side of the stage, and the big screen was right next to us. So if you really wanted to see it, you'd have to crane your neck up to the right. But that's... That's that's another issue entirely. But when it came to go see RRR, we ran into a major issue. And that was, it was flat, and the people who were sitting in front of me were tall. And they were sitting really upright in their seats, and that's fine. You should be comfortable to go see a movie, particularly of that length. But I couldn't read the subtitles. Now, I've seen the movie before, before I went to go see it on the big screen. I caught it on Netflix. I realized the Z5, the streaming service, that their brilliant marketing strategy of, oh, we'll give it to Netflix, but only the Hindi version. We'll only put the Hindi dubbed version on Netflix. And if you want to see the original Telugu version, you'll have to sign up for our brand new Indian streaming service, Z5. Brilliant. Because it wasn't cheap and they got my money because I saw RRR and I thought I just put it on one day. I had heard, I had heard about it. I had friends go see it in the theater and rave about it on Twitter for the RRR Encore, I guess. And then it came on Netflix that summer, that May or June. And one morning I just decided to put it on and <laughs> I was hooked from the first scene. The very first scene in that movie, I was like, oh my god, I can't put this down. This is, like, incredible. And it never disappointed. A three-hour movie didn't waste a single second of screen time. That's not an exaggeration. Whether it's your cup of tea or not, there's no way you can knock that film for wasting your time. Now, when I went, now I was excited to go see it in the theater. Uh, you know, with an intermission, I was excited to see it in its purest form. Straight to the veins! Until I realized that I couldn't read the subtitles. And it, I wasn't the only one. I noticed people in front of me. They were craning their necks around the people sitting in front of them. It really did open my eyes to the issues of modern day film presentation. In the sense of when I worked at a movie theater, when I ran a movie theater in college, I mean, I wasn't particularly good at it. And... But you have to make sure the films that you are playing work. You have to scrub through. If you, I mean, if the movie skips in the middle, that's an issue. But you have to be attentive and aware. But before we played a movie, we would quality check it. That's what I mean by saying the, the letters QC. To make sure the film is good to go before you accept money for people to go and view it. And it's the same thing in movie theaters. Just your regular first run movie theaters um, the QC process is less on that one you really do find out once showings begin but you have to go and make sure the masking is correct you got to go make sure the trailer packs are all, you know all in, all in the same aspect ratio and what a brand and basically even if, even though you can't QC these flicks you know like the latest Marvel movie or release from Paramount or Warner Brothers you know, it doesn't matter um, usually on Thursdays and Fridays, 
when you're the manager on duty, you you are attentive to that stuff. You can't QC this stuff. But these flicks might have large gatherings. I remember J Lo Jennifer Lopez's. I think the film was called Second Act, and I remember this specifically because the film was it was showing up on the big screen, but like it was in the wrong aspect ratio. And we're trying to figure out what was wrong with it, and come to find out um, whoever put the trailer pack together, whether it was me or the other couple managers, we mistakenly put a trailer on that was the wrong aspect ratio. And it screwed up the entire package. And, you know, you can't QC stuff like that. It just slips through. It's a crack. But you have to make sure that you're ready to give out passes or partial refunds. I don't know if you can do refunds, but you can offer passes. You can remedy the situation to the best you can. And you monitor the situation in the future to make sure everything's up and going. Particularly in first-run theaters because they run in two projectors usually. You have this, you know, quote-unquote, just naming a company off the top of my head that we used, Screen Vision. I use that in parentheses. I don't know why they exist. Uh, but basically, they're the company that run the previews, the Chevy commercials, all the stuff that like um, that people pay them to put in front of your flicks before the previews proper start. Um, so that's all tough. And I know I'm on, I'm on a tangent about stuff. I'm not even talking about subtitled movies, but this stuff is important. And when you're the manager, and again, I'm going to single it out. I'm so sorry. I don't know if this is going to go anywhere on the internet or not, but if it does, I do apologize in advance. Um, if you're running, if you're the program coordinator, wow, I'm getting specific, at the Brattle Theater, even more specific, and you put together a program of your, of the year's most beloved films or Oscar nominated films, and one of them is a three hour subtitled epic. It's something that, you know, the program uh, uh, person himself he introduced the movie and went ahead and said, this is like one of my favorite movies of the year. It's an experience. You have to see it on the big screen. If, the, if they are trying to preserve the big screen experience for such an amazing film that may or may not change that person's life, the way they see movies, then why on God's green earth, and I, I know I, that's a terrible expression to use, why the hell would you put that movie in a flat movie theater? Maybe they did it because you can get higher attendance and make more money. But you robbed people of an experience. Now, I'm pretty sure, and I, I'm, I could be speaking out of my ass here, and I apologize if I am. But the Brattle Theater is, is smaller, but it's also a movie theater. I mean, I don't know. I'm torn. I'm torn. I, I, I feel bad saying this without having been to the Brattle in a very long time. But I feel like their stage was also elevated. I don't know. I don't know. Maybe it wasn't. Maybe maybe Boston just isn't a good place to show RRR and you know other foreign films in another language proper. I can't. I don't. I don't really know if I believe that because you know you show these people show films all the time. I'm sure the. I'm sure the experience at the Brattle Theater would have been more fulfilling than if I had seen it at the Brattle instead at Somerville. I'm being very specific here, and I apologize. And Ari, the guy editing this, probably, I am so sorry. I've been going on almost 10 minutes now, just kind of rambling. But it's an issue. And if we don't address this issue, people are going to be really turned off by these foreign movies that are just now breaking into the mainstream. Indian films in particular, especially with their length. At my local Cinemark, Ari and I just went to go see a flick there the other day, another Indian movie, because like RRR, I'm like, ah, oh, it's a long movie, but hey, I liked RRR. Let's go see if I can, you know, really, you know, reprogram my brain into this kind of, you know, new culture of cinema, this landscape that I'm not familiar with. And it was, you know, it was an okay movie. It was, it was a movie, but I was in a proper movie theater. You have to walk upstairs to get to your seat, and nobody had any issue reading the subtitles because it was clear. If you're the Brattle Theater and you can guarantee an audience, why the hell would you rent out the Somerville Theater? Why wouldn't you do it at the Brattle? Why would you do it at the Brattle if you can't do it? If you can't present the film, don't present the film. But there are other theaters in Boston. 
you probably could have made a deal with AMC. It's like, hey, can we rent out one of your auditoriums? They're going to come and buy popcorn, and you're going to make a fortune, and we're going to make a fortune, and we're all going to be happy. And everyone who paid to go see this movie is going to be happy. I went to go see RRR, and within the first 10 minutes, I was distressed. I was distressed. I, I drove over three. I drove. I drove. I uh, didn't drive over three hours, but I did drive quite a bit to get to this screening, and it was ruined by someone just minding their own business sitting in front of me. But they were oblivious to the issue that was being presented, and it wasn't their fault. It was the programmer's fault. And if it's happening in Boston, then it's happening all over the country because modern movie theaters are not equipped for foreign movies. But I hate to break it to you all, foreign movies are, ma are mainstream movies. With streaming, with internet and I don't condone pirating but what I'm just trying to say is the world cinema is at your fingertips and when you bring it to a wide audience and, a, and an auditorium you have a responsibility to make sure you picked the correct venue and I was trying to think of solutions should theaters you know should should older theaters um, half live acts half movie theaters should they, I don't know, perhaps redo their seating? I don't know. I don't know. I, I think that may be a lot of money. Honestly, I think the, the easiest solution is take your movie theater screen and just put it a little closer to the ceiling. Sure, you know, your, your neck might be a little cranked, but at least you won't feel cheated out of not getting the full experience you feel you paid for. And I really do think that the people putting this on should be ashamed of themselves. You took people's money, you promised them an experience that you probably got to have, but you had got to have the have you got to have that undisturbed. And you funnel people into this room and you give them a half-assed performance, and that is just not acceptable. Anyways, that is just a few minutes of my rambling on the current state of film presentation in regards to subtitled movies. I don't think I'm off base, but I'm also kind of up my own ass sometimes. So, and I will stop saying ass, and when I do say ass, I will say ass less weird ass. <laughs> There's an ass us joke in there, but it'd only be funnier if I got more listeners. So, us Ari, I don't know, I don't know, I don't know. I don't know, but in case this does go on the internet, my name is Justin Murray. I have a Patreon at the same name. I have a YouTube channel that this is probably on under the same name. And if you like my voice, come back. If you hate my voice, come back. If you like my face, come back. If you don't like my face, come back. I, I, I don't care, honestly. You know, you know... <laughs> Throwing, cyberbullying me, you know, on my YouTube channel and stuff. That's, that's, that's fine. That's fine. At this point of the game, any engagement is better than no engagement. Just don't marry me unless it's a, a diamond ring I can pawn for drugs. I don't do drugs. Not like that. Not, not, I mean, not yet. I mean, <laughs> not, not in the sense of like, oh, I gotta, I gotta sell this ring for dope. Like, that's crazy. It had to be harder than dope. Okay, bye-bye.